It's time to talk about encrypted messengers. I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for this video. This is one of the favorite tools in the privacy community and in the mainstream. There are tons of options. By far, there are more options for an encrypted messenger than absolutely anything else in the privacy and security community. With so many options, it can be hard to figure out which one to choose. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through some of the encrypted messengers that I recommend and their pros and their cons and help you decide which one is right for you. This video is brought to you by Community Support. If you like the new oil and you wanna keep us going, be sure to support us. There's a lot of ways to do that. There's a merch store where you can get actual physical merchandise. There's fiat donations via Open Collective and LibrePay. And there is cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, Monero, and others. We also have affiliate links for services that we recommend, where if you go ahead and get a paid plan or buy a product using one of these services, we get a small kickback. So there's a lot of ways to support us. If you are able to, every little bit helps. If not, there's always liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing the video around, and things like that. Thank you so much for your support and keeping us going. So as always, let's start up at the top. What is encrypted messaging? Well, technically most messaging is encrypted, usually with TLS or SSL, which you probably know as the S in HTTPS. It's actually a surprisingly very secure form of encryption, but this is not end-to-end -end encryption. It's guaranteeing that the connection between your device and the server is encrypted, but once it hits the server, it can be decrypted by whoever owns that server. Zoom actually got in trouble for this earlier in the pandemic because they tried to claim their service was end-to-end -end encrypted, and then people pointed out like, no, you, you can still read it on your server, and they tried to be like, well, it's end-to-end -end encrypted to our server. For the record, they have since fixed this, but we still don't recommend Zoom. Usually when we talk about encrypted messaging, we're talking about end-to-end -end encrypted messaging. And what it really means, unless you're Zoom, is that only you and the recipient can decrypt that message. If you wanna learn more about encryption and end-to-end -end encryption, I do have an entire video about it that you can watch here. So what's wrong with SMS? AKA, why do I need an encrypted messenger? In some parts of the world, phone plans still charge by the SMS message. This is actually why in other parts of the world outside of the West, things like WhatsApp, Telegram, and Line are incredibly popular because they don't charge you per message. Even if you live in a country where SMS is free and ubiquitous like America, SMS is completely unencrypted, like totally. When it gets to the carrier's servers, it's unencrypted. As it's traveling through the air, it's unencrypted. Literally anyone can pluck your message out of the air for $20. They can build their own device known as an IMSI catcher, which basically pretends to be a cell tower so that any device in the area will automatically connect to it before connecting to a real cell tower. This is what's known as a man in the middle attack and it allows them to see all of the text messages in plain text and you have no idea because they're still getting delivered and sent. You may have heard of this device by its street name, a Stingray which is actually a brand of IMSI catchers that works with police. So these are already incredibly common. Police all over the country use them. And like I said, anyone can build one for 20 bucks. This is really not complicated stuff. Furthermore, your carrier keeps a copy of your SMS messages, again, in an unencrypted plain text state. How long they keep them varies. Some of them only hold it for a few months. Some of them hold them for five years or more. Now, real quick, let's talk about iMessage and RCS specifically, because I know there's gonna be some people out there, specifically Apple users that say, wait a minute, I thought my iMessages were secure. You're technically not wrong. Apple has iMessage and FaceTime, which is end-to-end -end encrypted, and recently Android started rolling out their version known as RCS. There's a few problems with this though. For one, these services are not cross-platform. Apple users and Android users cannot communicate securely with each other. For the record, Android has called on Apple to make this an interoperable system, and Apple has refused. There is also no metadata protection, so all of your metadata is clearly visible to Apple and Android. See my video here for more information about metadata. What about Telegram and WhatsApp? I specifically name checked those two at the top, and they are hugely popular, so they must be really good, right? Wrong. I'm gonna pick on Telegram first, and I have a lot of complaints with Telegram. Number one, Telegram is not encrypted by default. In order to start an encrypted conversation, you have to go in and enable it manually. Furthermore, you can only have a one-to-one -one encrypted conversation on mobile. You cannot encrypt group channels, you cannot encrypt calls, and desktop apps cannot participate in encrypted conversations, only mobile can. Telegram also has an atrocious security record. Rather than use an established well-known encryption, they made their own known as mProto. Version one was flat out terrible. 
It was bad. I cannot impress upon you guys how bad it was. For many years, cryptography experts warned people not to ever use Telegram. It was hideously insecure. Now, to be fair, version N Proto 2 is out, and from what I hear, it is much, much better. There are a few theoretical weaknesses. It's still not perfect, but it is a lot better. However, Telegram clearly has a track record that shows they're not great at encryption, so personally, I wouldn't trust it. They also have some really fishy and inconsistent data habits. On their official FAQ, they swear that they have never turned over any user data to any third party, but there are news stories all over that show that is not true. Telegram has repeatedly turned over user data when requested by governments all over the world. You can call me biased if you want, but I just laid out all the evidence. In my opinion, Telegram is not an encrypted messenger. If you want to use it as a social media tool and a chat app, that's totally fine. And feel free to take advantage of the encryption if you decide to do that. But please don't call it an encrypted messenger because at best that comes with caveats. WhatsApp's concerns mainly center around the fact that they are owned by Meta, AKA Facebook, who also has a god awful track record with privacy and security. There's literally entire documentaries about how awful their privacy practices are. WhatsApp shares all of your metadata with Meta. Period, end of story. Again, if you don't know what metadata is or why it matters, video on the topic. The metadata that WhatsApp shares with Meta includes things like who you message, when, how long your calls and interactions are, groups that you're in, including group name, picture, and description, device information like battery level, signal strength, browser information, mobile network information, ISP, device identifiers, precise location data, and they can collect your contact information if another user has your contact information saved in their address book and they give WhatsApp access. Now, before anyone gets too mad at me, analytics are not necessarily a bad thing. There are certain analytics that help the company improve the product and know how their device is being used so they know who to cater their audience to. I don't think it's necessarily a big deal to know if you're running iOS or Android or what version you're running. That's useful stuff for them to know. But things like your battery level, your signal strength, your ISP, there's no reason for them to know that. They don't need that information. Their privacy policy says that even if you disable precise location, they will still infer your general location using things like your IP address and your mobile provider. They just don't respect your privacy. Unlike all of these apps that I'm about to list who are significantly better. Now, I wanna go ahead and address the elephant in the room. I went with a clickbait title, sort of. At the time of recording, I'm thinking of going with a title like, what's the best encrypted messenger or something like that. Well, the truth is there is no best encrypted messenger. There are only ones that are best for your situation. There's a lot of different situations. There's a lot of different case uses and threat models. So in this video, I'm going to highlight the messengers that I recommend on my website. I'm gonna go in alphabetical order, just like the website, along with the pros and cons, and I'm going to explain what kind of situations I would use these apps in. Now, like I said at the top, there are tons of encrypted messengers. I know for a fact there are some that are really popular in the privacy community right now that I have not listed here. If you think I should list one of them, by all means, let me know, especially if you open an issue on GitLab, because if you just leave it in the comments, I will probably forget to check it out. I do have a set of criteria for encrypted messengers. At this time, some of the most relevant ones are, for example, it must have an open source client. It must be available on all operating systems, which means Android, iOS, and desktop. Web apps are acceptable, and it must be end-to-end -end encrypted by default. Be sure to check the sources for my most recent set of criteria, because honestly, I will probably have updated those in between when I shot this video and when it comes out, because while prepping for this video, I realized that my criteria could use a little bit of tightening up. Let's start off with Jami. Jami is a peer-to-peer -peer messenger, which means that there is no server in between you and who you're talking to. With a lot of messengers, let's say you message me and I'm offline, the message will be stored on the server until I come online and I'm able to receive the message. Like maybe my phone is off or I have no signal or something like that. Peer-to-peer -peer means that there is no server where the message will be stored. It will be delivered immediately. If I'm not online, the message will simply be kicked back to you until I am online. Jami is username based, which means that you never have to give out a phone number or any identifying information. And it is anonymous, meaning it doesn't require any identifying information like a phone number to sign up. Jami is not audited and it does not make any efforts to limit the amount of metadata it collects. It also does not have disappearing messages, which depending on your threat model may or may not be interesting to you. I would use Jami if I wanted a peer-to-peer -peer solution that worked across all platforms. For example, if I distrusted the server, or maybe I'm in an area with poor infrastructure and the signal is not always reliable. Next up is Matrix. Matrix is federated, which means that there is no central server. Anyone can set up their own server and they all communicate. Email is an example of a federated protocol. 
If you're on ProtonMail and I'm on Tutanota, we can still talk to each other. Matrix is username based, and depending on what server you go with, does not require any personal information to sign up with. Every server I've ever used will accept forwarding email addresses like simple login. You can self-host your own server for maximum data control, and Matrix can actually be bridged to connect to other services like Discord, Signal, and I think WhatsApp. Unfortunately, Matrix has not been audited. They do not make any efforts to minimize metadata. The default home server matrix.org is based in the UK, which is a five eyes country. They do not offer disappearing messages and one-to-one -one messages are encrypted by default, but group messages and rooms have to be enabled. In my opinion, the best use case scenario for Matrix is for communities and group collaboration. For example, my band uses Matrix as an alternative to Slack. The new oil also has a Matrix community, which I highly encourage you to check out if you're looking for other like-minded privacy people. Next, let's talk about Session. Session has been audited, although admittedly it was quite a while at this point and they have made a number of changes since then. They are probably due for an updated one. They are decentralized. They're not federated. There's a little bit of a difference. Session is username based and in fact picks your username for you. So it's almost impossible to like identify yourself except for the display name. They are metadata resistant. They have a multi-hop type communication protocol similar to Tor that is designed to strip metadata and make it harder to trace your traffic. They do not require any data to set up, identifying or otherwise, and they offer disappearing messages. It should be noted though that Session is still technically considered in beta and it's a little bit buggy and due to the onion router nature of it, it can be a little slow sometimes. Session is also missing certain security features like perfect forward secrecy. In my opinion, they provided a very valid explanation for why they chose to drop this feature, but I know some people feel really strongly about it. So I just wanted to make you guys aware. At this time, I have no reason to suspect that their security is not good enough, but it's definitely not as strong as some of the other options on this list, like the one we'll talk about next. I would use Session if I was in a situation where I valued anonymity above everything else. If being anonymous is more important to you than having the top of the line security and the latest features that other messengers have, Session is your messenger of choice. Now on the topic of top of the line security, let's talk about Signal. Signal is one of the most popular messengers out there right now, not just on this list, but in general. Signal has been audited. They have been proven not to log any significant metadata. They offer disappearing messages and they have a high adoption rate, which means you are likely to easily find other Signal users. It's incredibly easy to use and it is loaded with mainstream features like GIFs, stickers, group calls, group messages, all of it. On the downside, Signal is based in the US, which is pretty much the ringleader of the Five Eyes spy network. They are centralized. They don't do any kind of federation or decentralization or peer-to-peer. -peer. They do require a phone number. Now, this can be a voice over IP number, but that's not always feasible for everyone. There is also the mobile coin incident, which I am certainly not a fan of. This could deserve a whole video in and of itself, but basically what happened was Signal source code is completely open, both the client and the server. For almost a year, Signal did not publicly update their server code but there were indications that they were actually updating it to new versions. When they did finally push out an update almost a year later, it seemed as if they were trying to hide the fact that they were going to add in this cryptocurrency integration. Not out of malice, but more just to kind of hide the surprise. They wanted it to be a pleasant surprise to everyone. There were a lot of controversies about this whole incident. Number one, the lack of transparency. Number two, the fact that they went with a coin nobody had ever heard of instead of something tried and true like Bitcoin or Monero. For the record, in no way does this incident suggest that Signal is compromised or should not be used. It's just adding a feature that nobody wanted and probably wasn't the best feature to add. But it certainly was not a good look when all of this went down. It really did not reflect well on them. Also, just a quick note, I said Signal is completely open source. Since this incident happened, they have added a small bit of proprietary code that they use for fighting spam and abuse. Again, this is a very tiny bit of code. I don't think it's really something to worry about. The only reason it's not open source is so that spammers don't figure out how to get around it any faster than they already will. Unfortunately, some people have a lot of problems with spam on Signal, so they kind of had to do something. That might be a deal breaker for you. Personally, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but everyone has their own threat models. Use case. I would use Signal if you value security above all else and you are okay with your contacts having your phone number. Like I said, you can use a voice over IP number if you want, but even then you still have to give out that number in order to get people to contact you. So there are definitely some concerns there and it has to be a valid phone number. Signal has by far the best security out there right now. Multiple experts have looked at it and have nothing but good things to say about it. Our next messenger is Threema. 
Threema is audited. They are username based. And once again, they generate your username for you, kind of like Session. Thankfully, unlike Session, it's not this crazy like 50 character long thing. It's like eight characters, I think. And they're based in Switzerland, which is a country known for having very strong privacy laws. Actually, the Swiss military, I think, made Threema their default messenger. Anyone who has sensitive conversations in the Swiss military has to use Threema. Unfortunately, Threema is centralized. They do not offer disappearing messages and they are not free, literally. It costs about five bucks to get a license. Thankfully, they can be paid for with mass cards like privacy.com and Bitcoin, which can be pseudonymous if done correctly. Their whole argument is you're paying somewhere, either you're paying with your data or you're paying with your money. So they're just trying to be upfront about it, which I kind of respect that argument, but to be fair, a lot of people admit it's hard to get your friends and family to fork over five bucks to switch to an encrypted messenger. A lot of people have trouble getting their friends and family to do it for free with something like Signal or Wire or Session. Hey guys, future Nate here. In the time since I recorded this video, a new research paper has come out about Threema, arguing that Threema has seven serious vulnerabilities. Now, Threema has responded to these. Admittedly, their response was a little bit snarkier than necessary. On some of the vulnerabilities, I do agree with Threema. For example, some of the vulnerabilities say that if an attacker has your phone, they can do certain things. And in my opinion, that's a no kidding. If an attacker has your unlocked phone, you should just automatically assume it's compromised. That goes for any messenger, even Signal with their well-renowned security. If an attacker has my unlocked phone, all they have to do is open the Signal app to read the messages. This is not exactly rocket science. Some of the other stuff is remote, like the ability to control a compromised server and stuff like that. So all that to say that this is just another thing you should be aware of when making these decisions. Some of these attacks may be serious and may turn you away from Threema. Some of them may be a little bit overblown. It's also worth noting that while we're picking on Threema's shortcomings here, this is not the first time they've done something like this. On their website, they claim that Signal could potentially be compromised because of the US Cloud Act, and that's just blatantly not true. That's not how the Cloud Act works. That's not how Signal works. This is not the first time that Threema has refuted claims of vulnerabilities. Anyways, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and leave links to both the papers and the rebuttal so you guys can make up your own minds on what you think I would use Threema if I wanted something that I believed was reasonably secure and pseudonymous without giving out any personal information, but located outside the US. Finally, we have Wire. Wire has been audited. They are username based and they offer disappearing messages. On the downside, they are based in Germany, which is a 14 eyes country. And at one point they were owned by an analytics company. I'm still unclear if they are currently owned by this company. I did reach out to them and never got a response. They also admit that they collect a certain amount of metadata on signup that they pretty much never delete. So that is very unfortunate. Wire has really repositioned themselves and they're aiming more to target audience of business to business. So things like individual privacy and anonymity take a little bit of a background in favor of things like collaborative features and making sure that the app works well when talking and sharing with other users. It's designed to be more of a secure replacement for like Skype or Teams rather than an individual messenger. I would use Wire if I needed something like Threema, but free. If I needed something that was username based, user friendly and stable, but not necessarily anonymous, because again, they do collect a little bit of data. I do want to give one honorable mention, and that is Briar. Briar is a really impressive app. It is peer to peer, it works over Tor when it's communicating on the internet, and it works over Wi-Fi and Bluetooth when it can't find the internet. To me, this is really what makes Briar stand out. If the entire communications grid went down today, anyone who has Briar would still be able to communicate with other Briar users because it piggybacks off Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on other devices. It basically replaces the cell towers or the routers with phones. It's really genius. The drawback is that Briar is Android only, which is why it's an honorable mention and it's not actually listed on this list. It also must be online to connect. Now, when you install it, you can tell it to run in the background so you don't have to literally leave it open, but it's doing the same thing, which can drain your battery. I would use Briar if I lived in an area where there were a lot of Android users and there's an unstable infrastructure, or also if my government was shutting down my internet. If you're an Android user, honestly, this may not be a bad app to download and have ready to go just in case of an emergency. So let me address a little administrative detail real quick. On the website, I have encrypted messengers listed under least important, and I did this video pretty late in my video making career. Why is that? Truthfully, I think people really over-exaggerate the need for encrypted messaging. 
It is valuable, don't get me wrong. Like I said, SMS is garbage and we need something better. Personally, I regularly text financial information to my wife all the time, like pins for cards or card numbers. Some people like to send explicit messages to their partners and they wanna make sure that it's only for their eyes. And then of course, there's just the general principle of the matter that everyone deserves privacy and security. If a cell carrier has a leak and they're storing your messages for years, all those messages could get caught up in that leak. Even if an individual person at the carrier isn't looking at them, they could still end up in the wrong hands and be devastated. Thankfully, cell companies never have leaks. In my opinion, if you are getting into privacy and security, there are way bigger fish to fry. Things like using good passwords, using a secure email, because you can get passwords reset over email, for example, picking a more private browser, locking down the settings on your phone. There's a video coming on that soon. I know I skipped that, there was a reason. I'll come back to that. Messaging is free, except in the case of Threema. It's easy and it's fun. Downloading a messaging app hits that dopamine center in your brain that says, oh, I did something and now I'm more secure. And I think that's why it gets so much attention. It's also something that a lot of us deal with every single day. Most people prefer to text instead of a phone call. It's visible, it's always in our face, and it gives us that immediate hit of feeling like we made progress or did something. But in my personal opinion, truthfully, when you stop and look at it in context, it's actually a really small part of your privacy and security posture. There's no Google Analytics in my text messages. I don't typically do any bank transactions over texting. I don't store my passwords in an SMS file. When you stop and think about how important encrypted messaging actually is, chances are you'll realize that it is important because it's your privacy and privacy is a human right. But relatively speaking, there are other things that are a much bigger priority. So I think you should pick the encrypted messenger that fits your needs. And I think you should use an encrypted messenger, but I don't think you should necessarily obsess over them. They're helpful, they're great, and they're useful, but they're just a small piece of the puzzle and there are much bigger ones that you should focus on. If you found this video helpful and you want to make sure that I make more, please be sure to support us. We have a merch store. We have several fiat currency donation options. We have several cryptocurrency donation options and we have affiliate links where if you sign up for a service or buy a product, we get a small financial kickback. Every little bit helps and keeps us going. If you're unable to afford any of that, be sure to like and subscribe and spread the video around to anyone you think who could benefit from it. If you think I'm totally wrong and I didn't mention your favorite messenger or you disagree with my stance on encrypted messaging as a priority, then you should go ahead and buy a shirt just so you can burn it. That'll really show me. As you can see, there is no perfect messenger. There is no messenger out there that is federated and decentralized and doesn't require any personal information and is financially free and doesn't record any metadata and uses usernames and is on every single platform that you need it and so on and so forth. It just, it doesn't exist. But hopefully this video has walked you through some of the ones I recommend and helped you think through the use cases and which one might be right for you. I wish there was a perfect messenger, but there's not. Again, if you think I missed one, first, please check the criteria. Please check the criteria. <laughs> and if you really think I should add it to the site, be sure to open a GitLab issue because if you just leave it in the comments, I will probably forget it. If you want more info on all of these messengers or any additional resources to help you pick a messenger, there are resources on my site. Not only is there my site, but down at the bottom, I list a couple of comparison charts that will give you more in-depth information into all these different messengers. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.